Hello and good evening. It's a wonderful pleasure and privilege to spend another Wednesday night in our Bible study session here at For Gospel Assembly in Brooklyn. Uh, special thanks to our beloved pastor, Pastor Michael Bacchus, for this opportunity and uh, being able to share another Bible study session with you. Um, greetings to all our Full Gospel Assembly uh, congregation, our leaders, and, um, and our sister church in Queens, our sister church in the borough of Queens. Uh, tonight, our topic um, is the Holy Spirit. I'll be speaking or actually discussing the Holy Spirit. And our scripture for this topic tonight is taken from Acts 19 verses 1 through 8. And this is actually a very familiar scripture. Um, very profound in a way. So um, again, I'm grateful for this opportunity. Let's start in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity again. I thank you for your presence. And most importantly, Lord, I thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that draws us, Lord, unto you. So tonight, Lord, I pray, God, that as your words, as this lesson, as I share, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that ears would be attentive, hearts would be receptive. And Lord, that we can leave this session tonight um, discovering something new or having your Holy Spirit speak to us in a special way. Uh, remember those that are in the various media, we pray, God, that you would touch them and that you would uh, extend your grace to every listener. I give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. So uh, the topic again tonight is the Holy Spirit. And our scripture is taken from um, Acts chapter 19 and I'll read from verses 1 through 8. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? The question. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? Question he asked. And they said unto John, baptism. They said unto John's baptism. This was the baptism that they've experienced. Then Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on Christ Jesus when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul had laid hands laid his hands upon them the Holy Ghost came on them and they speak with tongues and prophesy. And 
the men that were about 12 and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months disputing and persuading disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God praise the name of Jesus hallelujah glory be to God so we have our rep our uh, scripture reference for tonight and um, one of the things we learned uh, as, a, as a backdrop as a background leading up to these this particular scripture we learned that uh, prior to um, we learned that Isaiah in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 Isaiah actually uh, spoke about the voice of one crying in the wilderness and we can look at that in Isaiah um, chapter 40 Isaiah chapter 40 and verses 3 Isaiah 40 3 and it speaks of the voice in the wilderness the voice of him that cried in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make straight in the desert a highway for our God so we see Isaiah prophesy about this voice crying in the wilderness and this voice that Isaiah was speaking about here was actually referencing John who we know is John the Baptist and here we see in the scripture that we read um, these folks here in Ephesus had not heard anything about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost and Paul asked them questions you know if they had received or baptized they had not even heard about the baptism or heard about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. So John here in, in chapter 1, in the book of John, chapter 1, verses 29 through 34, we can take a quick look at that. John chapter 1. verses 29 to 34 in fact let's go let's back up a little bit and let's go back to Luke let's back up and go to the book of Luke Luke chapter 1 verses 13 to 17. Luke chapter 1 verses 13 to 17. Bear with me here. Luke chapter 1 verses 13 to 17 and it reads, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zachariah, for thy prayer is heard and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name John so here in Isaiah 40 it talks about the voice of one crying in the wilderness which was prophesied so many years before the birth of John and here is an introduction to the birth of John and verses uh, um, verses 14 Verses 13 again, I'll read that. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zachariah, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name 
John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice in his birth, or rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither uh, wine or strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. So we see John here in the New Testament had the first taste of being filled with the Holy Spirit even before he was born. And we, we can rem we remember the story where uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to pay a visit to here, her cousin Elizabeth. And the Bible tells us that when she paid the visit, to Elizabeth, um, her, her baby leaped in her stomach. And, and that was, that could be considered, or many Bible scholars refer that moment to as uh, John being baptized with the Holy Spirit, even in his mother's womb, even in Elizabeth's womb. And the scripture continue here by saying, um, in verse 17, And he shall go before him in the spirit and in power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, to the disobedient, to the wisdom of the just. Make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So we see John was a forerunner here, according to... Um, Isaiah 40, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. John the Baptist basically was the one that actually prepared the way for Jesus. And in so doing, we saw that he had experienced uh, an encounter with the Holy Spirit, even in his mother's womb. Now, John the Baptist was there preaching. We learned that he was preaching and leading people to Christ, baptizing them, preparing the way. He said that many thought that he was the Christ. And he says, no, I am not. I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. There goes a fulfillment of that prophecy from Isaiah 43. And, um, and as we continue, uh, this background leading up to the Holy Spirit um, and our discussion about the Holy Spirit, we see also that as John was baptizing the people and preaching and saving them in the name of Jesus, <coughs> preparing the way of the Lord, we see that in um, in, in John chapter 1, going back to John chapter 1, we see an account here where Jesus now uh, came to John to be baptized. Remember in our scripture verse, it talks about the baptism of John. So we see also even Jesus came through John, because as John says, I am just the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. Now, Jesus, as he began to enter into his ministry, he came now to John to be baptized. And the scripture listed here as the Lamb of God, right? Jesus, known as the Lamb of God. Uh, and in verses 29, it says here of uh, John chapter 1, The next day John seeth Jesus cometh unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. This is he whom I said, After me cometh a man whose uh, which is preferred before me, for he was before me. So John is saying, hey, 
this same Jesus that you see coming before me here, he's the one that I spoke of. He's the one that I talked to. And now, he's now coming before me. And I knew him not, John said, but he that should be made manifest to Israel, therefore I am come baptizing with water. And John bear witness, saying, I saw his spirit descending from above like a dove, and it abide upon him. So we learn, many of us, that as Jesus came to John to be baptized, as he was undergoing that process of baptizing Jesus, um, uh, a dove, the heavens opened and a dove came and landed upon him. And John said here, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to be baptized of water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. So we see during this process of John baptizing Jesus, and the Spirit uh, from heaven, as like a dove, appeared and landed upon Jesus. And it didn't only descended, but it remained on him. The same is which baptized with the Holy Spirit. So we see that Jesus now was baptized. We see that John, who was baptized in his mother's womb, now was the forerunner preparing the way for Jesus. Then Jesus came afterwards. Now Jesus was baptized uh, by John the Baptist or by John. And then we saw that Jesus now, the Holy Spirit, uh, 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 in the form of a dove, ascended and not only ascended on him, but remained it remain on him and I saw and bear record of this the Son of God so John is saying I saw this and I now can bear witness that Jesus now uh, received the baptism or received the Holy Spirit it not only come upon him like a dove ascend upon him like a dove but it actually um, remain on him. Now moving forward, we see now in Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, uh, from verses 13, it says here, and cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. This is another account. And it says here that John forbid him. And John says, I have need to be baptized of you. And you're coming to me to be baptized? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so, for this it becometh to us to fulfill all righteousness, or this is an approach to fulfill the scriptures. So we see Jesus, John the Baptist, then Jesus also went through that uh, uh, baptism and who also received uh, a dove ascending upon him in the form of the Holy Ghost. And it didn't just appear, but it remained with him. So, um, so we see that progression leading up to um, our scripture reference where um, uh, Paul spoke to uh, these men, these disciples, while he was on this missionary trip here in Ephesus, and um, they did not hear anything about the Holy Spirit. Um, they were baptized, they've experienced baptized, baptism unto repentance, 
but never had any encounter or even heard about the Holy Spirit. So uh, as a quick review, um, as a quick review, uh, Jesus talked about um, the Comforter. He said that he would not leave us comfortless, but that he would provide another Comforter referencing the Holy Spirit. And this was according to John 14, verse 26. And Jesus said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach ye, or he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So Jesus is saying, Hey, I am not, he promises disciples, that when he leave, going back to his father, that is, he was not going to leave them comfortless. So while Jesus was here, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit did not come. The Holy Spirit actually arrived and met with the disciples and the believers of Christ after Jesus had ascended to heaven, which is what he had promised here in John chapter 14, John chapter 14 and verse 26. And moving along, um, in 2 Timothy, for God had, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy that God has not given us a spirit of fear, right? God has not given us a spirit of fear. And we know that Paul writes in Acts chapter 1, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall receive or you would have the ability to possess power. That power would enable you to witness unto both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in all Judea and to the utmost um, part of the earth. So we see the Holy Spirit also um, just as it equips John to, to baptize and be a forerunner before Jesus, we see that as Jesus was entering into his ministry, he also uh, received baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that enables Jesus to do the work of his ministry. And then we can actually convey that and relate that to what Paul um uh, uh, shared here in uh, Acts chapter 19, Paul was here on a missionary trip in Ephesus, and he actually met with these 12 believers, 12 disciples, and um, we see that while Paul was there, it tells us that um, he spent uh, a lot of time there. As a matter of fact, if we go in the scripture here, it tells us that uh, uh, Paul spent um, uh, a bit of time there with the believers and while he was there he taught in the synagogue and, and, and he was there three months disputing and persuading the things concerning uh, the kingdom so we see that while Paul was there teaching there was lots of doubts there were lots of disbelief and so Paul was disputing a lot of uh, perhaps maybe what they were confronting him with and also um, persuading, uh, creating disciples. And, and that was part of the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember John, even John, uh, Paul, sorry, himself had a, a conversion process as he met with uh, Jesus on the road to Damascus. If you remember Paul, was a persecutor of Christians. Paul basically used to kill Christians and believers back in those days, uh, as he was known as Saul before he became Paul. And um, uh, many of us would remember that story. He was uh, he was stricken, uh, blinded, and that during that process, Paul was converted and actually met with Christ. And if we remember that scripture where it says, uh, Paul, Paul, why 
persecution why persecutest thou me jesus was saying you know even though paul was killing believers and killing the christians uh, jesus didn't refer to him as him killing the christians jesus said why are you persecuting me right so we see that john actually met with jesus on the road to damascus where his conversion took place amen hallelujah glory be to god so um Paul was able to make a, a good impression on these, on these um, uh, disciples that he met to the point where he was able to um, lay hands on them. And, and as he laid hands on them, him being filled with the Holy Spirit, he laid hands on them and they got filled with the Holy Spirit and, and began to speak in other tongues, right? And based on that, uh, uh, um, uh, they fellowship with him and um, and based on that baptism uh, they were able to even um, speak in in towns not only that that actually prepares them uh, themselves Paul was able to prepare them based on uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to even to be witness because this is what it says in Acts 1, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witness. So the goal uh, Paul established here uh, during his this missionary trip in Ephesus, uh, he spent three months there, and during that period of time, he utilized that opportunity to witness and to preach the gospel and to and to. Uh, uh, did not only dispute but persuade many to accept and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So here's a couple of things we note uh, uh, from um, understanding the Holy Spirit and the operation of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit gives us power to uh, witness according to 2 Timothy 1 verses 7. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth, according to John thirteen, uh, John sixteen thirteen. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, according to John sixteen eight. And um, if I could share a, a, a Bible commentary that I discovered, it says, as we build a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit, He will also put us away. From things he would pull us away actually uh, he would pull us away from things we have in our lives that don't please him in other words that don't please God uh, we already know that the goal of the Holy Spirit's work is to make us more like Jesus but how does he do this the question is it's a process known as sanctification and no it's not as complicated as it appears sanctification is basically the process of the holy spirit stripping away our sinful habits and bringing us into holiness think of it like peeling back layers of an onion when the holy spirit start that process in us stripping away stripping away all the bad things stripping away our past and bringing us into alignment with the holy spirit bringing us closer and closer and closer to god and a relationship with jesus as another aspect or approach from paul during his missionary tour we can see that um and this is basically according to uh, an, an ancient, though not inspired, writing says that Paul held his meetings at the school of Tyrannus from 11 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. This was the time Paul, this was the time most people rested from work. 
including Paul, who worked to support himself while in Ephesus, according to Acts 20, verses 34 and 35. These also may have been uh, the off hours for the school of Tyrannus. Paul did this daily, meaning every day, considering his extended time in Ephesus. This meant many hours of hours of teaching. It is no wonder that the work in Ephesus was so broad and effective. And this continued for two years. Paul carried this on for two years and his effective teaching equipped believers who got the word of God out to all who dwell in Asia. So we see the effectiveness of Paul teaching and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. These words are used interchangeable, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So we see how effective that was, where it actually basically prepared those disciples for ministry, it prepares them uh, to be able to reach the people that dwell in Asia at the time. So as I close, looking back um, to our text in Acts 19, 1 and 8, we see that Paul clearly by himself, there was no way that he could reach this entire region. This was such a, a vast area, a broad area. And while he was there on this missionary outreach, there's no way he could have reached all these people. But he was able to witness, he was able to teach, he was able to baptize. And in such, or as such, he uh, was able to reach, make disciples, baptizing them with the Holy Spirit, filled with the power, filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit and that equip the Christians to do the work of the ministry, just as he describes in Ephesians 4.11. And that scripture reads, and he gives some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we see that the Holy Spirit is so powerful when it comes to ministry. We see that the Holy Spirit and the presence and the manifestation and the power of the Holy Spirit is so vital in our everyday life as witnesses, as believers, as Christians. Uh, the Holy Spirit equipped us, the Holy Spirit empowers us and the Holy Spirit, as I said earlier, it does do a number of things, does a number of things. Uh, it gives us the power to witness. The Holy Spirit guides us into truth. It, 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 the Holy Spirit um, helps us to want to study God's word, to show ourselves approved, to make us effective witnesses. And also we learn the Holy Spirit convicts us of wrong. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. So I trust that this brief discussion um, on the Holy Spirit, considering what, uh, considering this journey that Paul had taken in, in Ephesus, where he uh, stumbled upon these disciples or believers of Christ who did not even heard about the Holy Spirit, had no idea, they were baptized. They were baptized according to John's baptism, but Paul was able to introduce them to the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul was able to, he himself had the power of the Holy Spirit. He was able to lay hands on them and they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It empowers them, it causes them to speak in tongues. And in so doing, uh, it created an effectiveness of ministry in their midst to the point they were able to branch out 
Paul left and when Paul left, they were divided into various regions in the Asia uh, Peninsula area to the point where they were able to be effective witnesses and, and meet and convert and save many lives, leading them to the salvation and um, uh, sanctification and the birth, new birth in Jesus. So tonight, I trust that you've learned something from this little uh, brief uh, session on the Holy Spirit. So basically, I give you uh, an, an origin of the Holy Spirit, starting with um, uh, basically the um, Isaiah's prophecy uh, about uh, John the Baptist. Then John came on the scene. Then John was able to introduce, John got baptized in his mother's womb, in Elizabeth's womb. And also Jesus came upon the scene and was baptized and received power. From that moment, he met with John. Then we see that um, um, as Jesus taught and he made disciples effectively, and when he left, he promised the disciples that he would send them a comforter, which he did eventually in the early part of Acts, right? And also we see that uh, Paul, in, in a very effective way, was able to introduce the Holy Spirit to believers in Ephesus, empowering them with the baptism and speaking in tongues. Mighty and everlasting Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your words tonight. We thank you for sharing this uh, this this discussion, Lord. Uh, this time, I pray God that uh, someone uh, tonight um, may have been enlightened by these few words. Perhaps they can uh, themselves uh, dig into these scriptures and learn and 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 grasp as much as they could going forward, Lord. Let this be a beginning, let this be a starting point where we can also study to show ourselves approved and that we, we can become more and more familiar with the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Father, if there's someone tonight that does not know you or have a relationship with you as Lord, I pray God that, Father God, you would touch them uh, on depending on the media that they're perhaps watching or listening uh, at this time. I pray, God, that you would minister onto every need of your people. Those that have needs, you would meet their needs. Those that uh, uh, are sick, Lord, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, they can believe you for their healing. And I pray, God, that the Spirit, uh, that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, shall quicken their bodies, quicken their mortal bodies even right now, and that they would even feel a touch and feel the virtue of your Holy Spirit touching them and raising them up even right now, whether they might be in a home, nursing home, hospital, or even in a rehabilitation center, wherever they might be, Lord. I pray, God, for a touch of your Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name, I pray that you have a wonderful evening. Thank you.